Hey guys, thank you so much for joining us this morning. The service is about to start, but if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can download our app, Two Trees Community, in your app store, and follow us on Instagram for updates on how to stay connected and get involved. We love you guys and hope you have an amazing Sunday. Happy Sunday. Good morning, Two Trees Church online family. We are so happy that you're tuning in this morning and that you're going to join us in worship. Um, nudge your neighbor if you got a neighbor. Nudge your pillow if you're sitting next to a pillow. Raise your or orange juice if you're uh, eating some breakfast while you're tuning in. We're so happy that you're here. Um, we just want to worship in, in spirit and in truth like the word teaches us. So um, let's just step in this morning with a heart of honesty and with a genuine spirit and, and uh, just give ourselves over to the Lord. So let's, uh, let's bow, our, uh, bow our heads, close your eyes, and let's pray. Lord, I thank you for this morning. I thank you for this family that's um, growing and cultivating that you're moving in. And I thank you that... Um, God, all around us, you're just continuing to do amazing things like you like you started in the Word. And help us to open our eyes to see what you are doing around us and what you're saying and um, the miracles that you're performing every day. So right now, let's just tune our hearts to hear you and, and uh, to just to press in. If this time of worship just means just a quick realization that we're a little bit smaller than we thought we were, let it be. If this worship means that we are encouraged through a tough season, let it be. If you need to speak to us some tough truths, let it be. Speak, please, Lord, and let us listen. If we, if we need provision, if we need healing, Let it be. Sing it again. 
And you make beautiful things You make beautiful things out of the dust yeah. And you make beautiful things You make beautiful things out of us Lord, you make new things, you make beautiful things, you make incredible things out of absolute dust, and we give you praise for that this morning.
Touch my soul as mercy and grace unfold. I hunger and thirst. I hunger and thirst. With arms stretched wide. With arms stretched wide. I know you hear my cry. Speak to me now. Oh, speak to me now. I surrender. And I surrender. And I surrender. And I want to know you more. I want to know you more. And I surrender. And I surrender. we thank you and we praise you this morning and we thank you that in your will we are safe and we are taken care of Lord I pray that you just move in us right now stir up our hearts and just open up our spirit to receive you in Jesus name amen my friend Chris is on his way up here
Good morning, Two Trees, and happy Sunday. Just let your worship continue. There is a power in worship. If we read 2 Chronicles chapter 20, we see when Israel was surrounded on three sides by, by three armies, King Jehoshaphat worried, anxious, prayed to God, and God gave him the wisdom to send the worshipers out first. Before the army even arrived at the battlefield, just because the, the worshipers were sending up praises to God, the hand of God moved and the enemy turned on each other. When the army got there, all they had left to do was just pick up the spoils. So if you have things going on in your, in your life, if you have situations you're trying to overcome, remember your worship is your warfare. So just let God abide in your worship and you will see all the tricks of the enemy just turn to dust right in front of your very face. And that is the awesome God we serve. So now we're going to talk about the next phase of worship. And that is through our giving, through the giving of the, from the resources that God has blessed us richly with. So if you want to partner with Two Trees, right now you should be seeing a logo pop up on your screen that has the different ways to give. But for those who uh, just want to hear it, if you are tech savvy, you can text Two Trees, all caps, Two Trees to 77977. Uh, feel free to go on the Two Trees app, and at the very bottom it will have ways to give. And or if you like me and you just love to just touch it, pray over it, and ask God to multiply it, uh, you could come and you could give it in person. But please partner with us. God is doing a great thing with this ministry, a mighty thing in Ventura on this avenue, and we want you to be a part of it. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you, first of all, for just your many blessings, your, your, your overwhelming outpouring of love and grace to each of us. Father God, we thank you for the resources that you allow. You bless the work of our hands, Father God, and, and we are all blessed because of you. So, Father God, for each heart you have conditioned to, uh, to give a portion back to you that you've given to us, Father God, I pray a double-fold blessing over them. But we pray, Father God, that you do the increase, that you do the building, that, that you show us the vision uh, for this avenue, and we all in lockstep walk into it. Father God, bless Pastor Nick as he come today to break the bread of life for us, Father God. Let your anointing just flow over him and use him mightily in this day. We thank and praise you in all things, and we do this in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor Nick, come on up. Thank you, Pastor Chris. Thank you, Pastor Matt. So, let us start from the beginning. Genesis 1.27 says this. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. It's interesting because Matt, the first song he played, talked about making beautiful things out of dust. And are we not but dust? Think about it. What are we without God? What are we without the love of God? Because here's the thing. Without God, there wouldn't be an existence. So what's very crazy to think about is that we're all of God's creations. Every single one of us was created by God. Now, have you ever created something? Did you love it? Have you ever created something that was destroyed either by accident or on purpose? So a lot of you out there are artists or, you know, maybe mechanics or, you know, you may work on a, a thousand things and in your own right, you may have created something that was personal to you, something that was individual, something that nobody else could create. This thing was a one of a kind. And it was destroyed. I want you just to think of those words as I move on because you probably feel pretty bad right now if you actually think about what I'm talking about. If you've ever put something in motion that was destroyed, if you ever put your heart into something that didn't 
produce what you wanted it to produce, it would hurt. And it could hurt really bad. And you may still be struggling with that pain. I don't necessarily want you to hold on to the pain, but what I want you to think about is that every single person was created by God from the dust. So let's move on for a second. Why do you love God? I am pretty sure if you were to answer me, you would start your sentence with the word because, and rightly so. John 3.16, as we know, says, For so God loved the world, that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. 1 John 4.19, we love God because he loved us first. We love God in a lot of the times we say we love God, there usually is a because. And again, I understand that, right? He gives us love. He gives us joy. He gives us peace, patience, kindness, goodness, self-control, wisdom. He gives us more than we can ever obtain on our own, spiritually speaking. We believe and love him because he loved us first. And he did that, and he showed us that by giving his son, Jesus Christ. Ultimately, we love God because we have nothing, we are nothing. We are actually worse than nothing without God. You can reference 1 Corinthians chapter 13 where it talks about love. And if you do not have love, what, you know, what matters, right? And God is love. So we know when we talk about love that it's much deeper than we, even though we feel love and we know love, we can't fully grasp the love of God. Now, this is where it's going to get a little tricky. On the other hand... God doesn't love us because he loves us anyway. Romans 5, 8 says this, but God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. We do not deserve the love that God has given us. There's nothing we can do to deserve what he has for us. And you may need to hear this. Hear this very, I want you to listen to this closely. And maybe you've heard this before. I didn't come up with this. There is nothing you can do to make God love you more, and there is nothing you can do to make God love you less. Your actions, God's love for you are not contingent on your actions. Why? Because God loves you anyway. And if he did judge us in a way accordance for those who love Christ and know God, who have the Holy Spirit living inside of them, if he judged you by your actions, it wouldn't end well. It would not end well. I used to be a middle school Bible teacher, and one of the, I would always get these crazy questions from students about, well, if you do this, would you go to hell? If you do that, would you go to hell? If you, if you, if you, if you. And my answer was always this. Do you have the Holy Spirit residing inside of you? Because if you do, you are saved. God loves everybody. We ultimately have to make the choice to receive that love. Now, it is quite easy to love others because they do things for us. But generally speaking, our love for others should not be contingent on the word because. It's hard to hear. But think about it, and we do it often. See, God loves us anyway, so we should love others anyway. 
Now, as I read the next verses, I want you to consider what I said at the beginning about creation. We must not tear down God's creation. That's everybody. That's everybody. Right? If you had a masterful painting and somebody came up and ripped it apart, how would you feel? It may not end well for that person, right? Here are some tough verses that I'm going to read. Very, very tough verses to hear because it is easy to love those who love you back. Luke chapter 6, verses 32 to 36 says this, If you love those who love you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those from whom you expect to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to get back the same amount, but love your enemies and do good and expect nothing in return. And your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the evil. Be merciful even as your Father is merciful. Tough verses. When you allow your hate or your anger to get in the way of what God wants you to do, that is almost a self-inflicted wound. You cannot control what other people do to you. I understand that. And there is pain when people do things to you that hurt. There can be a lot of pain. I'm looking at you and I'm talking to all of you. I understand, and I may not understand your specific pain, but I know there's pain. We live in a world that has pain. But if you let that pain take you over, if you let your anger control you, you are not the puppet master. You are the puppet to that anger, to that fear, instead of to God. As disciples of Christ, we have to understand clearly that our perspective needs to be in a way that reflects what God wants for us in our lives. God loves us anyway. God loves us anyway. Do you love others anyway? Are you kind and merciful to others? And I'm not just talking to you. I'm talking to me. I'm talking to humans. I'm talking to people that have a lot of pride. We are human after all. But also, we have the Holy Spirit, which is God living inside of us if you are a follower of Christ. Jesus is making it crystal clear. We shouldn't love because we should love anyway. So Julia and I have been um, doing a Bible study and it's called Devotions for a Sacred Heart. And this is where I got, came, get, got the idea of because in any way. And then the story, there's a wife, and it's, it's not even a very serious story, but the, the words that she provides are profound. So she has a spouse, and every time there's an anniversary or a birthday, he doesn't really spend much time getting her anything. There was an example of when it was like their anniversary and he gave her a card from Walgreens or something and he didn't even sign it. He just gave it to her. And she struggled with this. And I understand that. I totally understand because, you know, we use these types of things to show our love and admiration for others, especially our spouses. And in the story, she... She has to deal with this because it never, it never ends, and it's happened multiple times over and over again. And this is what she said. I've realized it's never going to change, but I love him anyway. Could it change? Potentially. But if you think of the words that she's using, she's saying, I understand that he has some flaws, whatever they may be. But I don't love him just because he does good to me. 
I love them in sickness and health. This is something we all need to consider with our spouses. And that's the question I have. Do you love your spouse anyway? Do you love your neighbor, your boss, your coworker, your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your son, or your daughter? Do you love those people anyway? Do you want to be released? Do you want to have freedom? You can do that. You can have freedom from all of this, from your sickness, from your, your spiritual sickness, from, and, and I don't mean that you're not a Christian, but maybe you just have things that have happened in your past that are impacting you in a diverse way, and it really impacts your relationship with God. It's something I want you to think about because you can place that at the feet of God. You can place it at the feet of Christ. Don't lean on your own understanding with these things. So earlier I talked about how we love God because, and we do that often. But shouldn't we love God anyway? Now, hear me out. This is a different kind of anyway, because how dare we say that we love God anyway? And we do say this often. But here's the, here's the problem with the word anyway towards God. Is God is always good but that does not always mean we get what we want. And you may say, well, Nick, I I have prayed for things and I felt God told me I was going to get something and I didn't get it. Did God really tell you that? Because my God's not a liar. You either believe God is all-powerful and all-knowing and just, or you don't. It's really hard to live in that in-between ground because when you do, it's just, It's a very uncomfortable place to live. We can only love God because. And what I mean by that is he's always good. Now, if our perspective is off, it may be a perception of anyway, well, I love God anyway. So I I get how there's a weird connection there. But let me read you something about these three men. Now, These three men were with King Nebuchadnezzar. And they had good lives. They had a lot going on for them. In the book of Daniel, it talks about them. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And I love sharing the story because it got to the point where, you know, they just weren't going to bow down to this king. King Neb wasn't, they're like, no. We're not bowing down to your idol. We're not bowing down to you. So, King Neb was not very happy. So he tells him this. Let me read a little bit of the verses here in Daniel chapter 3, verses 16 through 18. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, because he wants to put him in a fiery furnace. He's like, if you don't bow down to me, I'm putting you in that furnace and you're going to die. You are going to burn to death. And this, this is a crazy story to think about. Because they couldn't, how are they going to stop him from doing that? This is what they say to him. We have no need to answer you in this manner. Let's stop right there. We have no need to answer you in this matter. They automatically took the power away from this evil king. They took it away because we have no need to answer you. The only need we have is God. That's not in the verse, I'm just telling you, but just for all of us, the only need we have is Jesus Christ himself. We do not need anything else. We need nothing else. We may want other things. Well, I need this, I need that. Listen, you need God. You need God. You need God. And when you recognize that, any kind of fear you have towards people in your life, things in your life, that, that will fall away when you recognize your need and what you need only comes from God. So again, they say, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If this be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. This is a great verse, but my next, the next verse is, I love the next verse. But this is a great verse saying, listen, God can save me. God can give me a new job. 
God can help me in my loneliness. God can speak through me even though I don't deserve to be spoken through. God can use me in ways I may never understand. God can deliver me from things I don't think I can really be delivered from. And this is what I really like, though. So they tell King this, listen, you do realize, I'm paraphrasing, that God can save us from this. But before as they took the power away from him, they really took it away from him on this next verse. But if not, so they're saying if God doesn't rescue us from this fiery furnace, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. God will save us. If he doesn't, it doesn't matter because I'm not going to worship you anyway. What can, how can anybody on the other end stand up to that when you recognize your freedom? Recognize your freedom right now. If you're at home, if you're sitting, recognize your freedom in God. Recognize it. You have it. Galatians 5.1 says this, for freedom... Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. You are free regardless of your circumstances. I'm going to have Matt come back up. You are free regardless of what's going on in your life. You are free regardless if you think that You can't get through something. And believe it or not, you are free and capable to love the unlovable. God himself has loved the unlovable. Us. Comes full circle. It comes full circle to know that God created us from nothing and we are nothing without him and he loves us anyway shouldn't we do the same shouldn't we do something that actually frees you you know what I'm talking about think about the word forgiveness for a second think about that Is your forgiveness always for them or does it end up impacting you in a positive way when you do it? You can let all this stuff fall off of you. All this stuff that's getting in your way can fall off. Is there trials and tribulations? Yes. Yes, there is. But God is so much bigger than all of those things. He always was and he always will be. So I leave you with this. Don't just love because, love anyway.
sing the chorus one more time. Hallelujah. Lover of our souls. Lover of our souls. And hallelujah. And hallelujah. With all of heaven we sing. All of heaven we are singing. We join the angels. With all of heaven we are singing. Lord, just bless us this morning with your love and your embrace and your goodness. Help us to love through and through as hard as we can just to help us, empower us, structure our love. Teach us to love when it's difficult. Move in that. And just bless this family in Jesus' name. Say it from your home. Say amen, amen. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next week. See you later. Thank you guys so much for joining us this week. We hope you were encouraged by this message. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. And to stay connected, don't forget to download our Two Trees community app. We hope you have a great week. We love you.